hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, satellite communication and so far we have discussed about uh, various orbital parameters i think nine or ten orbital parameters we have discussed or more than that so uh, i think that uh, more or less covers the uh, orbital parameters that are required from the point of view of satellite communication so in this video we are going to discuss about another important concept uh, related to launching of uh, satellites with the help of launch vehicles and uh, the amount of launch velocity that is required to you know position a satellite in the desired orbital path to follow a particular you know uh, trajectory so how the launch velocity or the injection velocity affects the satellite path the orbit the trajectory so we'll try to understand that in this video so this video is related to injection velocity or launch velocity of the satellite and its path the trajectory so we know uh, that a satellite is launched from uh, the surface of the earth giving it some forward motion and sufficient velocity so that it uh, overcomes the gravitational attraction of earth and only then it can uh, escape the gravitational pull and uh, the centripetal and centrifugal force they balance out each other and it is stable in a particular orbit we have discussed in the orbital mechanics centrifugal force centripetal force so when these two forces are balanced out satellite is stable in the orbit and it moves uh, following a certain path so if uh, the velocity the forward velocity the upward velocity is not sufficient then what would happen is that it would not be able to escape the gravitational pull and it will fall back to the earth's surface under the influence of gravity and it has happened uh, the satellite launch failures so that happens okay so here we will try to establish a relationship between this launch velocity and how this launch velocity can affect the satellite path the orbit so uh, orbit and trajectory so the orbit is a path that is periodically uh, repeated by the celestial body or any body it is revisited for example the motion of planets around the sun the motion of satellite around earth it keeps on on and on and on and on continuously with a certain time period but trajectory is one is a path which is not repeated or revisited it is it is only done once it will not be repeated again so when it done in a loop in a cycle that is called a orbit when it is done only at once and not repeated that is called a trajectory so both orbit and trajectory they are paths but orbit is a path which is repeated again trajectory is only traveled once so this is the path of a launch vehicle carrying a satellite that is an example of trajectory because that launch vehicle will never again follow the same path backwards okay so orbits are of two types mainly mainly the orbit is elliptical circular orbit is a special case of elliptical orbit when eccentricity is zero so here some other terms also come into play such as apogee perigee which we have already discussed the maximum separation distance of the satellite from earth center apogee minimum separation perigee then we have the geocenter the center of the earth then some other parameters such as the focal points where earth center is located at one of the two focal centers then the semi major axis a the semi minor axis b small b and uh, then eccentricity uh, which is given by a square minus b square root over by a so when eccentricity lies in between 0 and 1 we have elliptical orbit and when it is 0 which is a special case of elliptical orbit it becomes a circular orbit that's when 
a is equal to b that is the semi major axis and the semi minor axis they are equal so we will get, get a circular orbit otherwise orbits are generally elliptical as per Kepler's first law of planetary motion so I would recommend you to please watch the previous videos first related to orbital mechanics uh, Kepler's law orbital parameters all those videos so that you understand this video in a better way so now comes the uh, main topic which is injection velocity or launch velocity whatever so injection velocity is the horizontal velocity with which a satellite is launched into space okay injected into space by the launch vehicle okay the carrier vehicle so it is done to provide a specific path okay trajectory to the satellite okay the launch vehicle follows a particular trajectory launches the satellite into space giving it some amount of velocity and that velocity that determines what will be the orbital path what will be the nature of the orbital path okay the amount of this injection velocity has a most of the you know uh, effect on the satellite orbital path so it will determine what will be the nature of the elliptical path what will be the eccentricity or whether it will be an elliptical orbit or circular orbit all that is determined by the launch velocity or the injection velocity so the mathematical expression of injection velocity is generally it is expressed as velocity of injection v subscript i also it is called as velocity at perigee why because normally the launch happens at the perigee point at the perigee point the minimum separation distance point it is at this point the launch vehicle and the satellite they separate or the satellite is positioned in its orbits that's why injection velocity is also called as velocity at perigee because injection happens at the perigee point the minimum separation point okay so don't confuse whenever you uh, hear the term velocity at perigee it is the same as injection velocity so the mathematical expression of injection velocity is in this way root over of 2 mu by r minus 2 mu by r plus r okay mu is the product of the universal gravitational constant and the mass of the earth we have already discuss that in the orbital mechanics section so mu is the product of universal gravitational constant capital g and the mass of the earth then small r that is the apogee dis sorry perigee distance okay small r is the per perigee distance this smaller separation distance between the earth center and the satellite position in its orbit the minimum separation between the satellite and the earth center or the surface of the earth that is the perigee so small r here is perigee distance capital r is the apogee distance which is the maximum separation between the satellite and its orbit and the earth so everything is clear related to mathematical expression of the injection velocity root over of 2 mu by r minus 2 mu by r plus r mu is the product of universal gravitational constant and mass of earth capital r is apogee distance small r is perigee distance and injection velocity is also called as velocity at perigee because the launch happens at the perigee point now the injection velocity can be broken down into three main components okay three main components it can be explained in terms of three uh, you know we can call it cosmic velocities and it is these component velocities that affect the satellite orbits the nature of the satellite orbit whether it is elliptical whether it is circular if it is elliptical what will be you know the nature of the ellipse the eccentricity the semi major and semi minor axis the apogee perigee all that is controlled by these velocities 
so injection velocity can be explained in terms of three you know demarcations three ways the first cosmic velocity the second cosmic velocity and the third cosmic velocity so what they are we will see so first is the first cosmic velocity so the first cosmic velocity is one at which the apogee and perigee distances they are equal okay so when apogee and perigee distance they become equal the velocity at which this happens that is called as the first cosmic velocity so apogee and perigee distance are equal means the orbit is circular so you can say that the first cosmic velocity is one at which the satellite moves in a circular orbit and that first cosmic velocity is given mathematically as the root over of mu by small r where mu is the product of universal gravitational constant and mass of earth and small r is the perigee distance so if the injection velocity is equal to the first cosmic velocity the satellite will follow a circular orbit and it will move with a uniform velocity which we have discussed in the uh, first video orbital mechanics mechanics video related to velocity of satellite time period of satellite we have all discussed that so please watch that video so important conclusion that when injection velocity is equal to the first cosmic velocity satellite will take a circular orbit and the apogee and perigee distances are equal next if the injection velocity this this is the first case so here the satellite is launched at this perigee point whether whether it is perigee or apogee it is uh, does not make any difference because it is a circular orbit so perigee and apogee they are the same so how it happens satellite is launched with the launch vehicle which follows this dotted trajectory okay so this is the path of the launch vehicle okay it's a one time path that's why it is called as trajectory the launch vehicle launches the satellite here with a certain injection velocity which is equal to the first cosmic velocity so when the injection velocity is equal to the first cosmic velocity at this perigee point or the apogee point the satellite takes a circular orbit so satellite is carried with the help of launch vehicle up to this point following this dotted trajectory launch happens here with a certain injection velocity then satellite takes a circular orbit okay so this is how it happens satellite is carried with the launch vehicle at this point launch happens with a certain injection velocity which is equal to the first cosmic velocity so as per the mathematical relationship the satellite takes a circular path now the interesting thing if the injection velocity is less than the first cosmic velocity what will happen is that then the satellite would follow a ballistic trajectory and it will fall back to the surface of the earth okay again the launch vehicle carries the satellite up to this point launch happens the injection velocity is less than the first cosmic velocity then the satellite would follow a uh, this kind of a ballistic trajectory path it is called and it will fall back to the surface of the earth under the influence of gravity under the gravitational pull of earth so when the injection velocity is less than the first cosmic velocity satellite will not you know be stable in its orbital path it will fall back to the earth following a ballistic trajectory under the gravitational pull of earth okay now uh here the when this this case when the injection velocity is less than the first cosmic velocity then the launch happens actually at the apogee point not at the perigee because it is uh, does not make a difference because uh, apogee and perigee does not come into play because satellite is not following any orbital path 
So, when the injection velocity is lesser than the first cosmic velocity, so the launch of the satellite or the separation of the satellite from the launch vehicle happens at the apogee point. Normally, uh, it happens at the perigee point. Okay? It is only in this case where the injection velocity is lesser than the first cosmic velocity the separation happens at the apogee. Just to say it is the apogee point because apogee and perigee comes into play when a satellite orbit is formed. But here under the influence of gravity the satellite is falling back to earth. So apogee and perigee have no significance here. Just to say here the separation of the satellite from the launch vehicle happens at the maximum distance from the center of the earth. So, to say apogee, but in general the separation happens at the point of perigee. Okay? The separation of the satellite from the launch vehicle or the satellite is launched into the orbit at the point of perigee. Okay? So, when the injection velocity is lesser than the first cosmic velocity, the satellite will fall back to earth under the influence of gravity following a ballistic trajectory. Okay. So, the next velocity uh, which we will discuss, we have discussed the first cosmic velocity. Now, we will discuss the second cosmic velocity. Okay. So, the second cosmic velocity, it is that velocity at which the satellite, it escapes Earth's gravitational pull, the gravitational attraction force of Earth. Okay? So, the second cosmic velocity can be mathematically given as V2, which is the second cosmic velocity, is equal to root over of 2 mu by r. So, mu is the product of universal gravitational constant and mass of Earth, and small r is the perigee distance. Now, how is second cosmic velocity is important? So, when the injection velocity is equal to the second cosmic velocity, in that case, the launch will happen from the surface of the earth. The launch vehicle will follow this trajectory, carry the satellite and at the point of perigee, the separation of the satellite from the launch vehicle will happen with a launch velocity or injection velocity v2. Then it will follow a parabolic orbit and escape Earth's gravitational pull. So the satellite orbit will take the form of a parabola. So if you compare this expression, second cosmic velocity expression with the general expression of injection velocity, you will see that in this expression and this expression, the 2 mu by capital R plus small r, this term is entirely missing here in the second cosmic velocity. So, what actually happens is that at the second cosmic velocity, the uh, apogee distance capital R, it becomes infinite. And as a result of that, this term becomes 0 because as infinite is in the denominator, the term will become 0 and we are only left with 2 mu by small r, which is the second cosmic velocity. So, the, perige, uh, the apogee distance capital R becomes infinite and uh, that term becomes 0. Second cosmic velocity is given by this and the shape takes in the form of a parabola, the satellite orbit. Now, another interesting case involving the first and the second cosmic velocity comes into play when the injection velocity is greater than the first cosmic velocity but lesser than the second cosmic velocity. So, it lies in between that. So, in that case again as usual the launch vehicle uh, will carry the satellite following this trajectory and again at the point of perigee. Okay? Note here, the separation happens always at the point of perigee. So, here the separation happens, the satellite escapes 
the launch vehicle with a velocity in between v1 and v2 and it follows a elliptical path with eccentricity eccentricity lies in lying in between 0 and 1 now the shape of this elliptical path depends on how close this injection velocity is to the first cosmic velocity or to the second cosmic velocity depending on that the shape of the elliptical orbit will vary or the eccentricity of the elliptical orbit will vary also depending on this the perigee and apogee distance will also change depending on this injection velocity okay so if this injection velocity will be close to the first cosmic velocity it will moreover be similar to a circular orbit and if it will be <coughs> sorry if it will be uh, closer to the second cosmic velocity then the satellite orbit will become more and more elliptical okay uh, closing on to this uh, parabolic path so when it is in between the orbit will be in between the circular and parabolic orbit and it will be in the form of a ellipse so this is a very interesting case okay so the apogee distance as i said the apogee and perigee distance they depend on the injection velocity okay so more the injection velocity more will be the value of apogee and perigee distance okay now when the injection velocity is greater than this second cosmic velocity at that case the trajectory the satellite orbit it will become hyperbolic within the solar system with eccentricity greater than 1 okay this is when injection velocity is greater than the second cosmic velocity so we have discussed the second cosmic velocity what happens when the injection velocity is equal to second cosmic velocity when in it is in between first and second cosmic velocities and when it is greater than the second cosmic velocity now we have discussed the first and the second cosmic velocity now we'll discuss about the third cosmic velocity so from the point of the second cosmic velocity if it is increased more and more more and more further away from the second cosmic velocity value a stage will be reached when the satellite gains enough uh, you know velocity to escape from the solar system earth's solar system so that velocity at which okay that injection velocity at which the satellite escapes earth's solar system that is called as the third cosmic velocity okay the third cosmic velocity is one at which the satellite escapes earth's solar system the mathematical expression of the third cosmic velocity is given by v3 is equal to root over of uh, 2 mu by small r minus v subscript t square into 3 minus 2 root 2 here mu is as usual product of universal gravitational constant and mass of earth small r is the perigee distance vt is speed of earth's revolution around sun so the third cosmic velocity is uh, that launch or injection velocity at which satellite escapes earth's solar system so these three cosmic velocities are very 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 important depending on which the shape of the orbit it can be circular it can be elliptical can be parabolic can be hyperbolic or it can uh, you know escape earth's solar system so all of these velocities have their own significance depending on the requirement of the satellite where it is to be positioned where it is to be you know where it is to be launched or uh, kept stable so that it will follow a particular orbital path depending on those requirements suitable launch velocities are given to the 
satellite launch vehicle the satellite launch vehicle carrying the satellite and then at the point of uh, perigee sufficient uh, injection velocity is given to it so that it follows a particular orbital path okay so here we have discussed about the first cosmic velocity okay the mathematical expression and how it gives circular orbit and when it is lesser it follow uh, the satellite falls back to earth following a ballistic trajectory then the second cosmic velocity the mathematical expression the two cases when it is equal to the second cosmic velocity in the injection velocity and when it lies in between v1 and v2 and when it is greater than the second cosmic velocity uh, next is the third cosmic velocity okay what is its significance how it uh, how satellite escapes earth's solar system when it attains the third cosmic velocity or a velocity greater than the third cosmic velocity and its mathematical expression so here we have discussed about these basic concepts related to injection and launch velocity so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day. Thank you very much.